All right, I'm standing with Master Sergeant Gilliam from the U.S. Air Force, and he is in charge of what we see back here, all the concrete, the 3D printing, the innovation, and they're on the National Mall here in Washington, D.C. for the Innovative Housing Showcase. Master Sergeant, why are you here? So we're here to display the capabilities that our new 3D printer has. This is the only one in an operational unit in the military right now. So we acquired this through innovation funds through my uh, command staff inside yeah. of CE. So this has both military as well as civilian implications that we can sure. use this for. Okay. So really stoked. Uh, a primary facility for us is what we call a B-Hut, so a 16 by 32 building. Yeah. So we can use it on the military side as well as deploy this to some sort of disaster zone and we can right. quickly put up uh, some sort of housing shelter uh, within a day. So we're looking to be able to print that. We would have to do it in four right. sections based on that uh, device. Sure. But we could print one in a day. And the product that we use within 12 hours has already reached between four and 6,000 pounds PSI. So our structures folks can come in right behind us and start throwing right. up a roof yeah. uh, and do whatever. And we also have uh, scientists right now that are working so that if we travel, say, to the Pacific Theater, we don't have to drag a lot of cement product with us. We're looking to make it out of beach sand that's already there, which is just deteriorated coral. Right. So your calcium, limes there, seawater, and whatever other additive we may need. So yeah, to make yeah. it uh, that much more expeditionary. Sure. That's the first time I heard that, right? The sea coral. And it makes a lot of sense being able to do that because it's pretty much surrounds every nation, country, somewhere, you would think. Yeah? Yes, sir. It certainly does. That would make a whole lot of sense for distribution and logistics. Yes, sir. And if we're on an island that, let's say we need four components and that island only has two or three, let's yep. go to another near island to see if it has the fourth. So we're taking a lot of the logistic assets out of the chain right. for the military having to use those to bring product to us. What is the applications for the military now? Bunkers? Bunkers, uh, T-walls, yeah. uh, hardened facilities for troops to be in. Uh, right. You know yourself, prior military, yep. most of the structures we stay in, it's either a tent or a <laughs> stick structure, two right. by fours and plywood. That's right. Uh, not too survivable. Yeah. Uh, still? Still. Oh, boy. So not just from, uh, you know, enemy fire and whatnot, but from right. fire, from, yeah. from wind, from you name it, this sure. is a much more uh, sustainable structure. Right. Uh, adds a, a whole lot more protection, especially if there's troops or, or folks inside in the event that something happens externally. So if this is cured fully, how many PSI is it? 10,000, sir. So 10,000 10, PSI. Yes, sir. Right. And then you could fill the entire thing with concrete if it's for a bunker or yes, a safety, safety wall position. Um, what about printing for military vehicles to protect them? Uh, revetments, absolutely, yeah, we could do that. Revet yep, yeah. revetments. Yep. So we could we could do that. That's not a problem. So folks have asked us, what can't we print? What can't you think of? Because if you can put it into AutoCAD, right. we can print it. Yeah. Has this system been deployed yet and tried? In different not at parts this. Of the world? Not at this time, no, sir. Right now, again, this being the first one, yeah. we're still in testing. I shouldn't say testing. We're still working with it. We're trying to break it. Yeah. When I say break it, that's in a good way. We're trying to push the limits of right. it so we know what those limits are and how far we can get with it. I love the military because you play with million dollars pieces of equipment you get to break them sometimes yes sir just pushing them to the limit so super cool you've been you've been serving this country for how many years you said uh it's about 37 i've been in since 1985. 37 years so give a round of applause <laughs> for that all right so how far has this come like so when did you get this system uh we've had this device in our possession now for about three months for about three months yes it's it's designed and built out of state college pennsylvania so we yep. XHAB yep. is the company that we acquired it from. Sure. So once we had it, we spent a week there, my team and I being trained on how to use it. Uh -huh. uh, great knowledge, those people there are just, right. it, it, it's wow. The knowledge that's there and what they came up with, it's a great product. So of course, then we went through it from a contingency aspect and said, oh, here's some things that should be improved, some things we think are missing. Right. Because you know yourself, we're gonna take this to some areas that aren't really all that. Right. conducive to you know construction that's right uh, so we've asked for some improvements so the second one that they're in production with now which is going to go to an alaska unit okay. they're actually incorporating some of those changes how do you deal with the terrain right this is the biggest thing you got gantry units out there that do 3d printing this is a tracked unit that does 3d printing when you get into theater and you need to put some safety up right away mm -hmm. or you know something how, how is it dealing with all the unlevel surface? So we would take our EAs with us. They would go out and do a quick survey of the site that we're yep. going to print on. Normally you would want some sort of a concrete pad there, but in a contingency environment, if we need something uh, in an expedient method, yep. uh, they would do a quick soil test for compaction as long as it meets it. They do their survey and we can accommodate for the ground not being level by how fast we move the printhead and how much product comes out of it. 
Okay. So if you're off a degree or two from you know one corner to another, we can compensate with how that prints until it's level. So you'll print your own footer and it'll compensate the depth of the footer so you have a level top, but it fills in underneath. Correct. We could program that into the application that we're right. using to print that structure. Right. And for people who don't know, like the LiDAR system scans the ground and it'll give you the contours and everything, and then you're feeding that into the system, yes. which then allows you to print it to accuracy with all the data. Correct. And right now, we refer to it as Betty. It's the beta version, so we yeah. named her Betty. Got Betty it. doesn't know where she's at in the world, right. so we're working now to have that change so that no matter where we take her right. through geospatial stuff, that she will literally know, hey, this is where I'm at and I kind of have a grasp on the terrain you're on. Sure, sure. So well, again, speed up the amount of time it takes us to start printing something. Is there anything I didn't ask you that you want to tell everybody out there? Uh, not that I can think of, sir. You pretty much covered all of it. We're very excited to have it yeah. and, and we're very eager to get it out and start doing great things with it. Well, I, I love it. Master Sergeant, thanks so much for coming on the show. There you have it, everybody. U.S. Air Force is in the game of building it better, <laughs> keeping our troops safe wherever they are, and help, helping in natural disaster areas. I'm Dave Cooper, Master Sergeant Gilliam. See you next time.